I am from uh, a small village called Dripsy. Uh, Dripsy, I know it doesn't really sound like a place you might live in. Uh, Dripsy sounds more like the kind of disease you'd catch from a Victorian prostitute. Uh, you can imagine the situation, the Victorian gentleman. I say, Daisy, that was absolutely amazing. You have excelled yourself. But why does it sting so much down here? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Master. I should have told you. I have the dripsy. <laughs> I think uh, last year was a stand-up show, or is this show is more of a story. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'm actually telling a story, which makes it kind of easier to kind of channel all the jokes towards, to converge towards a point. So uh, I feel better about the, what I'm doing now as a show compared to last year. Last year was, was great great crowds, great reception, but this year there's something extra for me in telling a story that, uh, that I really enjoy. You know. I want to rewrite the entire ad which shows what women are like and what men are like, you know, so that, and, and probably with a nice country, a Galway accent or a Kerry accent or something like that, a daughter walking in and saying, Daddy, what are you doing on top of the roof? <laughs> I tell you no, no, and I'm trying to fix the roof. The star and blew a couple of slates down on top of it. But Daddy, would you not get global home improvement to fix the roof? And I with my fuck at those Stephen bastards, so they wanted 800 euro to fix two fucking slits. They can go and fuck themselves. <laughs> I suppose you're right, Daddy. Hang on a second, I'll get a ladder and give you a hand, right? Because that's what real people are like, you know? Because I have a neutral accent myself, because my mother's from Kilkenny and my father's from Cork, so if you were to look at a kind of a audio output of my accent, it's like it's been tempered by, you know, above and below, you know, so I've got a, the flat Kilkenny tempering the Cork pitches so when you, I think if you've got a kind of a neutral accent it can make it easier to reach into because all accents are all variations so if you start neutral going to variation can make it oh, can right. be easier. So I'm going to try some new stuff I'm going to go into writing some books uh, but obviously in order to kind of catch the zeitgeist I want to write books that are relevant to the current stuff that's going on so I'm going to write some children's books for a start um, new literature for kids uh, with kind of against the backdrop of of, of how we got into our mess, so that they won't, their generation won't make the same mistakes. So here we have some old friends are welcomed back. Here's Anne and Barry. I mean, nothing to you guys, but it's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> with a twist, Anglo and Barry. Um, here we have uh, Anglo takes advantage of light touch regulation to help herself. New word, regulation. Uh, Barry is also in the golden circle. He can have as much jam as he wants. New word, jam. <laughs> Uh, they're having their accounts reviewed. Anglo is having her accounts reviewed by the financial regulator. Will he be angry when he sees the balance sheet? G accounts and golf. Uh, <laughs> fuck no, will he be worried? The financial regulator gives the children money for an ice cream. Barry has an idea. Barry has 10p for ice cream. He can use it as collateral. Barry borrows 400 million euro from Anglo to buy the Irish glass bottle side. I'm hoping that uh, in terms of getting across into an Edinburgh audience, you know, the point of the show and it being a kind of a little chronicle of the, ex the recession through the, my prism. Hopefully they'll be interested in the kind of economic stuff and then I'm hoping they'll laugh at the jokes as well. So I'm hoping it'll work.